Hello, I'm Martha Page, and welcome to Face to Face Worship Center. It's 2021, the year to occupy. Are you ready to step into your promise in 2021? Well, it's our desire to continue to show you how to occupy this year. Our services are aimed at hosting your face to face God encounter and to be transformed by His Word and His presence. Because of COVID precautions, our physical church is closed. But here we are virtually, and that's a blessing. When our physical church reopens, you have a standing invitation to join us any Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are located at 9121 Piscataway Road, Suite 4B, Clinton, Maryland, 20735. If you're tuning in, in again from last week, welcome back. And if this is your first service, Pastor Tony will continue our ser sermon service series entitled The Four Laws of Productivity. How can we occupy and be productive in 2021? Today's message will come from Genesis 1, 28, as Pastor Tony teaches us on the third law replenish. This is gonna be really, really good. Just as a reminder, please visit us at our website, f2fwc.org, and also like and share our services today. And please visit our prior services on our YouTube channel at Face to Face Worship Center. So, are you ready to go in today's service? Our dynamic music ministry is going to prepare our hearts to receive. So let's go. Truly we serve an amazing and awesome God. And so we just want to lift up our voices and it just acknowledge his awesome power, his might, his strength. Truly just so grateful for his presence. The fact that he's omnipresent, he's there with you, there with us here. Just so grateful, amen going to lift up our voices and just begin to bless him and honor him for all that he continued to be to us. Amen.
to Face Worship Center. I'm Pastor Tony, and I'm so delighted that you have chosen to worship with us, whether via Facebook, YouTube, or our website, or however you may be watching. We're delighted that you've selected to join us. Welcome to the year to occupy. I came to ask you to be a part of helping us continue reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, we have determined that although we can't physically be together in one physical building, we can still be together here online. We can share hearts, thumbs up, and all the other plethora of emojis that are offered in the online worship experience. And you can also give of your finances. I believe Face-to-Face -face Worship Center is good ground. It's good ground that you can plant in and you can expect a harvest. If you believe that, I'm going to ask you to, plead, to please prepare to give cheerfully. Now, it is our custom here at Face to Face that we talk to our money. We like to declare over our money because we understand the power of life and death is in our tongue. The words are going to be at the bottom of your screen. And do me a favor and repeat after me. I walk in financial abundance. God supplies all of my needs. Not half of them, but all of them. Satan, take your hands off my finances. And finances, I command you to be loose from the world system. Because I give tithes and offerings, I am blessed and not cursed. Therefore, God will see to it that I always have more than enough for myself and to bless others. Did you repeat after me? Good. Now, there are several ways you can give here at Face to Face Worship Center. You can give via Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center, Cash App, dollar sign F2FWC, our website at f2fwc.org and click the donate link or text f2fwc give to 1-888-364-4483 all the information that i just shared should be scrolling across your screen now are you ready to go further into worship our music ministry is going to take us a little higher and then i'll be back with the lesson for today. Music ministry, come on, let's go into worship. Just begin to just be in my spirit. There's no one like him. There's no one like him. All over the place, wherever you are, just begin to just expound on that. There's no one like him. That's why we say that our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is bigger, awesome, and power our God. Our God. Oh 
series, The Four Laws of Productivity. Today we're going to deal with, or more specifically address, replenish. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, and God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. As we have embarked on this mandate to occupy, in 2021, God has given us guidance to how we can start the year being productive. We have the four laws of productivity as found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. 
We've already reviewed two of those laws. The first, to be fruitful. An indication that God has placed a seed in you and I that must be released into the earth. The second law that we dealt with last week was to multiply. We learned that God requires more than fruitfulness from us. But to multiply, there must be a pruning process that we go through in order for there to be more. God has to cut away or cut out things in this process. Anything that prohibits our growth. Well, today we're going to talk about replenish. What does God desire that we understand about replenish? Let's pray. Father, we thank you that in this lesson you will give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. That our eyes of understanding would be enlightened that we may know what is the hope of our calling and the riches of the glory that you have in us, your inheritance. What have you placed in us for the purpose of the working of your mighty power? That we would know what you have filled us with that we are to fill the earth with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we look at this next law of productivity, it's a principle that is not self-focused or self-centered. But more specifically, it's people-focused or outreach-focused. It poses the question, what will you do with what you've been given? That thing that has grown within you, that, that has been multiplied, what do you do with it? The seed, the gift, the talent. Have you transferred or shared your ability with anyone? Or are you afraid that when people uh, know what you know, learn what you've learned, that they may be better than you are at it? Hmm. A pastor, a teacher, a leader, if you please, who, who wants to remain in the spotlight or, or the star having their gifts and talents, but not sharing, developing, or teaching anyone else. The tragedy is that that person goes to the grave with their seed. But in 2021, I am determined to operate in productivity. And you and I cannot be stingy. Put in comments, I can't be stingy. Now, before I unpack this principle, I want us to be to understand what God was commanding mankind to do in replenishing the earth. In the original text, the word replenish doesn't mean what we think it means. When we look at the text, God commands Adam and Eve to replenish the earth. God was, was not telling them to replenish or to fill again or to refill as we understand the meaning of the word in our English language. But the Hebrew verb means fill, F-I-L-L, -L, not refill. To take what you've been given and fill. Well, God, what are you saying? Fill, when, when, when you look at this word in the Greek, there's several understandings, but it has this definition, one definition in the passive voice. It means to feel mentally or to be under the full influence of my, 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 my. In 2021, could God be calling you and I to be influencers? Well, in Matthew 5, Jesus, he says something to this on this wise. He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So we are the salt of the earth. What does that mean? 
When he says, we are the salt of the earth. And if we lose our saltiness, we're good for nothing. Well, I don't want to lose my saltiness. I don't know about you. But in order not to lose my saltiness, I got to understand, what does Jesus mean when he says salty? Well, in Hebrew, the word for salt is melech, M-E-L-A-C-H. And melech means to eat salt. But more specifically, to be under the obligation to eat the salt of the palace. To be under the solemn obligation to the king's interests and no one else's. Well, what does this mean, Tony? It's, it gives an implication that our lives are not our own. That as a believer, we are under the order of the court of heaven. Under the order of the palace, if you please, that, that we, we don't first and foremost approach the king to sanction or bless our own interests. But we enter the courts of the king under the solemn obligation to eat the salt of the palace. This means that, that, that we, are, we live under the obligation to the king's interests. That whatever he desires is what we desire. That as citizens of the kingdom, we have an obligation to feel, to influence the world. We see an example of this principle in Matthew, the 14th chapter, where Jesus takes what he has multiplied and now he fills the people with it. He influences them. Specifically, he feeds them. You remember the story. When Jesus was teaching the multitude one day and, and it got late and his disciples came to him and, and they began to say, now, master, we're, we're in a desert place. And, and it's time that the people start leaving because they, they may get hungry and we don't have any money or food to provide for them. Here we go again. Jesus has his disciples in the classroom of life. But this time, he shows them what he does with things that he multiplies. <laughs> Glory to God. He tells the multitude, about 5,000 men, not including women and children. He tells them, sit down on the grass. And then he proceeds to take a little boy's lunch, five loaves and two fishes. He looks up to heaven, blesses it, breaks it, and then he gives it to the disciples to give to the multitude. Hmm. Now often, we, 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 we focus on the amazement of how God can take five loaves and two fishes and feed 5,000 men, not including women and children. Now, if we dig any deeper into the text, one commentator said that it was estimated that it was about 15,000 people there, if you include the women and the children. I want you to see how Jesus filled, influenced the multitude. Jesus did not just meet the, net, the need of the multitude, but what he did, he multiplied and filled the multitude. He lavished them so much that food was left. The Bible records 12 baskets full were left over after he filled them. Now we all see the obvious. And we have heard this multiple times when this story is told. That God will shatter our pint-sized expectations and little becomes much when we place it in his hands. But it is also noteworthy to examine the text further. Jesus didn't simply snap his fingers and cause everyone to present or present to have a meal right before them. Instead, he breaks the food and he distributes it to his disciples after he's prayed over it. Now, the disciples had to trust the Lord in this incident for everything that they were to distribute. 
They could only give as they received. I can imagine Philip, Andrew, and the rest were, were put in a position of total dependence upon the Lord for the supply. They were the salt of the earth, understanding that they were under the obligation of the Father. That what Jesus told them to do, what he dictated to them, they were to obey. That as he multiplied, they feel that as he gave, they released. That as he directed, they followed. If we're going to occupy in 2021 and be productive, this is not the year for you and I to hold back and be stingy with the gifts, the talents, the seed that he has placed in us. Notice, the disciples could have easily been hesitant when Jesus told them to step out and begin to distribute to the multitude. They, they, they could have looked and said, oh, this is not enough to give out. Or, or they could have very easily in their own personal bias and judgments, determine this ain't going to work. How many of you watching me tonight, today, this afternoon, God has given you a talent, a gift, an ability, and you feel the earth with it based on how you feel in the moment or what you have going on in your personal life. Do we not realize that, that God knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the end, that nothing takes him by surprise? He knows what's going to happen in our lives before it happens. The pitfalls, the frustrations, the setbacks. But it doesn't stop him from requiring of us what he's planted in us to fill the earth. Some of you are watching and you're operating in the things of God based on your temperament. Specifically, you, you, you work for God when you feel like it. If you feel like it, if, if your situation and your, your circumstances are in alignment, then you feel, okay, I can do what God called me to do. But I want you to see something. In our text, we see these disciples it was the disciples, my sister, my brother, that wanted to send the people away. Because they said it was getting late. Because they said they were in a desert place. Because they said that the people were probably getting hungry and they had no finances or food to provide them. But God never looks or focuses on our circumstances, but what he has placed, what he has planted in you and I. He planted a seed. Jesus says to them in Matthew and Mark's account, after they tell Jesus to send them away because they could be hungry, Jesus says, you give them something to eat. <laughs> if I may build on this thought, Embellish it if you please. Jesus could have been, could Jesus have been saying to them, you've seen me work miracles. You've seen me heal two blind men. You've seen me open the mouth of a demon possessed man who couldn't talk. You've seen me raise the dead. You've seen me heal a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. And just by touching the hem of my garment, she was made whole. During this season, as you walk with me, while you walk with me, I was depositing in you seed, seed to be fruitful, seed to, that would, that's supposed to multiply. But when the disciples get to this desert place, whether they realize it or not, it's now time for the seed that was planted in them to fill the multitude. Now, what is planted in, in you? To find out what was planted, they had to use their faith. They had to go into the multitude, I, pres I, I, I presume, and ask if anyone has food. And the young boy said, I got my lunch. But they did. 
determined, even when they got the lunch, they determined that what was among them wasn't appropriate for the circumstance, the situation. But God, Jesus took it, blessed it, broke it, and then he gives it back to the ones who feel it's not enough to distribute it to the multitude. What is the revelation? That what Jesus gave them, he expected them to fill the people with, glory to God, to replenish the people, if you please, to influence the world through this miracle. I've been sent to you today to, to pose the question, what good are you going to do with your loaves and your fishes? Your gift of administration, your talent of singing, your, your, your entrepreneurial abilities. Theoretically, believers know God can easily multiply whatever he wants to. But the question is, when we face the circumstance, the desert place, will we believe that he's given us what is necessary to feel, to influence, to impact, to change the world? I want us to understand as the church that the ability God has given us to fill the earth is in you. Christ's presence in the world is seen in the form of his church, his body. It's the body that God is going to use to replenish the earth. You don't believe me? Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 22 and 23. And he had put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, catch this, that filleth all in all. Glory to God. This text speaks to the issue of filling, influencing the whole world with Christ. I want to make three careful observations from verse 23, and I'm going to take my seat. We see first that the church is the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. God gave Christ as the head over all things to the church. The church is his body, not the physical building that we call church. But we, the people of God, the disciples of Jesus, we are the elect ones, the ecclesia from all nations. We are his body. Point two, it is Christ that feels all in all. Christ. Now, Colossians says it's Christ in us, the hope of glory, right? So Christ the one that feels all in all, and we, the church, are his body. That Christ will fill every sphere of existence everywhere in the universe in all ways he pleases. Paul tells us that, that Christ rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, and in doing so, he broke the bonds of death and captured for himself a host of captives and led them free from death and fear. Well, why did Jesus do this? So he might feel all things. Glory to God. Now, this, is, this, this expression, he ascends, what does it mean? Except that he also descended, because you can't ascend until you first descend, and he descended in the lower parts of the earth. He who descend is himself also. He who ascended far above the heavens that he might feel all things. What this shows us is that Christ's purpose is to feel all things. It's to accomplish 
all things by raising from the dead and ascending into heaven as victor over his enemies. In other words, he's feeling all things. Now, how does Jesus do this? Well, he does this with the authority that has been given him by him raising from the dead. Ephesians 1.20 tells us that God raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Far above all authorities, principalities, powers, and dominion. And every name that is named not only in the age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet. He gave him as the head over all things. Stay with me. He gave all of this to the church. Now notice four things. This text tells us about what God did for his son. He raised him from the dead. He gives him the seat of kingly authority at his right hand. Three, he puts everything in the universe, all power, under his feet. And number four, that this universal power that he gave his son, his son as the head of the church, now gives to us, the church. My God, my God. Why? Why, you ask? Well, according to Ephesians 4 and 10, that he might feel all things. Oh, my God. Just like Ephesians 1.23. So the feeling all things is the effect of Christ ruling all things. Picture this, a king over all territories that are not fully subdued to him. Ephesians 1.20 tells me that Christ is indeed the king of the universe, that he is above all, meaning he's ruler, that he is over every name, that God has placed all things under his feet and therefore he is head over all things. And he accomplishes his purpose in every sphere. He will, he will make himself unmistakably known in every place. He will be preeminent in every nook and cranny of the universe. Even the outer darkness of hell will be filled with the presence, the authority, the power of our Christ. That his wrath and that his knowledge would be known across the world. But what does this have to do with you and I? I hear you asking the question. This is how he will do it. This is how he will replenish or fill the earth through the church. As the church, we have what it takes that according to Ephesians 1.23, the church is the body of Christ and that Christ fills all in all. Right? And that the glory of Christ pervades all in all. That the glory of Christ pervades everything and everywhere in all of his splendor. That there is no place where his power does not hold sway to accomplish exactly what he desires, he mandates, and he wills. That he feels all things. And as Christ's body, we possess his fullness which feels all things. Paul says to us, he gives us a clue in Ephesians 3 and 10. That he tells us that in order for the manifold wisdom of God to be known, he will use the church. I don't know about you, but just this thought takes, it takes my breath away. If you believe it and, and, and a part of the church, that the wisdom of God, the manifold, many-sided, diverse wisdom of God is being made known to the rulers, the authorities, the, the satanic and demonic powers in the universe. Christ is now seated above these demonic forces. He's seated above them, and what he does, he says, now that I'm seated 
and I have all authority. I am now distributing this authority to you and I, the church. So what does this mean? How does this tie into replenishing the earth? I'm glad you asked. Because it is what Christ has given the church. Now is the assignment that he had to feel all things. To influence all things. To impact all things. It means that God aims to fill the universe with the glory of his son Jesus through the church. That the church becomes the showcase of his perfection. Glory to God. That the church becomes the, the showcase of his authority and power. That by putting the church on display as the embodiment of his son, we walk in the same dominion that he walked in. And because we walk in dominion, we can fill the earth with his goodness. How he chose us, how, how he predestined us, how he cared for us and, and taught us and, and suffered for us and, and died for us and then rose for us that we may reign in him. He called and justified us, cleansed us, and now he keeps us every day. And his keeping power is the thing that the world will see that we can fill the world with his glory. God did not exalt Jesus and then say, okay, since I've exalted him, and then simply say, now go ahead and fill the universe with your glory. No. What God did after he gave Jesus all authority, he then says, now you give it to your body, the church. So we are called to fill the earth, to replenish the earth, to impact the earth. What am I trying to say? You and I have the ability in us to replenish, to fill the earth. How? Because the power that has been invested in Christ Jesus and raised him from the dead, and the authority that he, he had that allowed him to be seated at the right hand of the Father, we, the church, now have this same ability, this same authority, and now the right mandated to us to fill the earth, replenish the earth, show the earth his glory. We can't hold our seat any longer. We can't be stingy with our gifts and our talents because we don't feel like it or, or our circumstances are, are not the best. He has invested, planted, and multiplied in us. And it must now reach the utmost part of the earth. In 2021, the year for us to occupy, I'm charging you to step out of your box, your limitations, and your excuses. Remember, it's Christ in you. What is in you and I has the ability to reach the world. Oh, I hear you. You're, you're saying, well, I've never been out of my own city, out of my own state. And that may be true. But do you know, do you know people out of your state? We have an opportunity to share this gospel with everyone we meet. And I'm challenging all of you watching. To those of you that may even watch in the replay. God has placed something in you that must reach the world. That must fill the world. That must replenish the world. Start by your own inner circle. Share with them and then move from your inner circle to your social circle. But you have a mandate, my sister, my brother, 
to fill the earth. Put your strategy together. Figure out who you're going to share the love of Christ with. One person a month in your inner circle. When you feel, uh, uh, feel that wish, go into your social circle. But in 2021, God is requiring of us not just to be fruitful, not just to multiply what he's given, but now fill the earth with. Go beyond your scope. Go beyond your own boundaries that you have set for yourself. Let me pray for you, Father. We realize the seed that you have placed in us is power. Power to tread upon the enemy, to, to speak to the mountain and it must be moved, to, to lay hands on the sick and they must recover. Help us, Father, to realize that what you have invested in us, planted in us, seeded in us and brought to multiplication is now to fill the earth. Help us to speak to the brokenhearted, to replenish them, the dejected, to replenish them, to help the people in our circle and outside of our circles to know that with you all things are possible. Father, we ask you to give us courage, give us boldness to step out in the year 2021, in Jesus' name. Now, those of you that haven't accepted the Lord as your personal Savior, God also desires you today. He wants to make you a vessel of his glory. If you want to give your life to Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I surrender my life to you today. I repent of all my sins, known and unknown. And I ask you to come in my heart and be Lord of my life and fill me with your spirit. I want to be one who fills the earth with your power. I accept you today as Lord in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I want you to call us at 301-744-9927 and we will join with you on this journey, provide you some information so you can know how to surrender all of yourself to the Lordship of Christ. I pray you got something out of this lesson today. You and I have a mandate to feel the earth with what has been planted in us. Like the disciples had to fill the people with what had been distributed in their hand. As always, thank you for joining us. Remember, he that hath begun a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We'll look for you next week here on Facebook Live. God bless. We pray you were transformed by the face-to-face -face worship experience. We will be looking for you next Sunday as Pastor Tony closes out the sermon series, The Four Laws of Productivity, How We Can Occupy and Be Productive in 2021. Pastor Tony will share with us another principle in the four laws. So you don't want to miss this. Plus, we will be hearing from one of our partners as she shares the goodness of God. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again on next Sunday. And don't forget, we will be having communion next Sunday. So we look forward to seeing you. Continue blessings. We would like to invite you to some of the things we have going on here at Face to Face Worship Center during the month of January. The Bible study series this month is developing your spiritual eyesight starting Tuesday, January 12th at 7.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. Join us as we learn how to see 
what you believe. Visit our YouTube channel and watch some of the previous services. Simply go to Face to Face Worship Center. Our corporate intercessory prayer is every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. Join us at 6.30 a.m. by dialing our conference line, 319-527-4008. Come pray with us as we pray for the nation, the world, and you. Join Face to Face Worship Center on the Now Network every Wednesday morning at 2.30 a.m. If you can't sleep and you are in need of a word, tune into the broadcast by looking for this network on your electronic device. You will be so glad you did. There are several ways to give at Face to Face Worship Center. You can give using Givelify, look for Face to Face Worship Center, or Cash App. That's the dollar sign, F2FWC, or our website at f2fwc.org and click the donate link or you can text f2fwcgive that's f2fwcgive to 1-888-364-4483 and give your offering there. All this information should be at the bottom of your screen. And join DIA Ministry, that's Deborah's in Action Ministry, as they present He That Finds a Wife. This two-week Bible study series will be facilitated by our very own Pastor Tony. Join us Thursday, January 21st, and Thursday, January 28th at 7.30 p.m. on Facebook Live. This will be a Bible study series that shares what a man looks for when looking for his wife. Ladies, you don't want to miss it.